So we just take this on the fly. We start now. All right. Three minutes, boy. How about you? No, it's uh, one past two p.m. already. Oh. FYI, the national time server is hosted by Convergence okay, Communications. Take it away, Rex. All right. Magandang hapon. Good afternoon, wherever everybody else. Hope you're having a good and safe day. Thank you very much. And now we're we're starting the meeting today, um, but a few house rules first uh, before we proceed. Um, please be advised that uh, we all the microphones of non-program participants will be muted to keep help keep the background noise to a minimum, and we want to uh, request the visiting Rotarians and guests to please type in the comment box at your name your club or affiliation, and the Rotarian who invited you to participate in this meeting so we can properly acknowledge you later in our program. For our open forum later at the after the talk of the speaker, in case you want to ask a question, please use the raise hand button or do this to simply notify us by typing in the comment box. Alternatively, you may want to type in your question ahead and we will accommodate it during the Q&A. Lastly, after the response of our president, please do not leave immediately because we will uh, have a group photo with the speaker. Now, uh, without much ado, a call to order by our president, Attorney Luis Asoweche. On behalf of the Rotary Club of Makati, I call this meeting to order. By the authority vested me as the president of Rotary Club Makati Magilas, I call this meeting to order. By the power vested upon me as a life-changing president of the Rotary Club of Makati, I hereby call this meeting to order. Thank you, good gentlemen. Now. May we have the invocation to be headed by P.P. Manny de la Serna from RCM Magilas. Let's put ourselves in God's holy presence, the um, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. For the beauty and glory of this day, for the betterment that comes us through Rotary, and for the bounty spread before us, we thank you, O Lord our God. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. And now, may we have the Philippine National Anthem. <laughs>
between our fellow men As Rotarians we live to lead We believe in service of self And this is why we succeed We're the Rotary Club of Makati And together we stand proud We are leaders with integrity Always ready to serve humanity Always living by the four-way test Building good, building peace along the way Thank you very much for such a heartwarming song. Uh, tama ba, Mr. President? Now we are going to do the recognition of Paul Harris Fellows. Uh, don't you do the four-way test first? Oh, yes, yes. Four-way test. And now to lead the four-way test, we have Director Princess Paul from RAC Makati. Four-way test. The four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. Please repeat after me. Is it the truth? Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Is, is it fair, fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And the answer to all this is yes. Thank you very much. Now proceeding to the next stage. Um, we're Mr. President, are we going to greet now or later? Pa? No, later. No. Okay, later. okay. We'll do the recognition now. As um, well as the, yes, okay. Now we are going to have the recognition of Paul Harris Fellows. Thank you. And uh, take it away. I will call on uh, Director Andy Prieto for his second Paul Harris, so he gets a pin with one sapphire. And then Director Chito Cantada for his third Paul Harris, so he gets a pin with two sapphires. Thank you very much. And now, Mr. President, are we going to have the classification talk or are we going to do it in a while? To do the classification talk of Tony Reggie with all his indulgence later on. All right. Thank you for that classification. And now, how about the president's time? I can see our uh, guest speaker being very we ready at this very moment. Introduction. We go straight to the introduction, uh, Rex, because of the limited time that our guest speaker has today. So we will Thank do you the very much. Time okay. After, right. All right. Now we'll have the introduction of the guest speaker by our VP, Director Tony. Lopez. Can I be heard, Drex? Am I good? Yes, loud and clear. Okay. Some years back, before the pandemic even started, the country was bidding out the third telco license. There were many interested parties for this highly coveted opportunity.
to compete with the giants PLDT and Smart uh, and Globe Telecom. It was down to five bidders who submitted their technical, financial, and aggressive rollout plans. Leading the pack were two groups, both headed by people with almost identical names. The first was Dennis Uy of Pudena or Chelsea Logistics, whose Dito Telecommunity eventually won the license with his partner, China Telecom. <clears throat> the other was Dennis Anthony Uy of Converge ICT Solutions, who was partnering with South Korea's SK Telecom. Literally, on the eve of the deadline, Converge withdrew from the race. As many of you know, I was a founder representing the pioneers in First Pacific in smart communications back in 1993. So as a retired old hand in telecom, I was utterly shocked because I had my favorites in picking who would be the better bet to succeed in a three-way race to provide the best telecommunication service to the country. But a year after that fateful withdrawal, Converge ICT stunned the business community when in 2019, the New York-based private equity firm called Warbus Pincus invested $250 million in Converge to bolster its rollout and infrastructure plans. A year after that, the company went public raising more than $500 million in one of the largest IPOs in years. All the data I encountered on Converge and its, and its founders give credit to the husband and wife team, that is Dennis Anthony and Mary Grace Uy, who are both in the Forbes Philippines rich list because the couple still have a majority stake in Converge valued at $2.8 billion. What struck me most was that Forbes described them as self-made billionaires and not from second or third generations of their respective family businesses. Today, we have the fortunate pleasure in having one of them grace our meeting as a guest speaker. Our guest speaker is the founder and CEO of Converge, recognized as a pioneer in fiber technology, who has grown his business from a small KV, a cable TV business in Pampanga to the solutions provider as the only pure play, high speed fixed broadband operator in the Philippines over a span of two decades. Starting with a small VHS store in his teens, he established a cable TV company in Angeles City, started wiring up the whole Clark community, then expanding to Central Luzon, and in 2013, entered Metro Manila with fixed broadband services. He went directly to fiber technology, while competitors were affixed with wireless broadband. More importantly, he made high-speed internet service affordable. By 2016, Converge was aiming to complete a nationwide rollout with a domestic fiber backbone to achieve its vision to bring world-class broadband services to average Filipinos. I know this introduction is rather long, but as your club director and vice president, I think I have the privilege of taking a little bit more of your time by adding, adding a tidbit or personal trivia to this introduction. You see, since the pandemic began, that restrained travel, my family had to resort to frequenting Baguio the last two years whenever restrictions were lifted. Each trip to Baguio meant for us a stopover in San Fernando City in Pampanga to have lunch in one of our favorite Chinese restaurants. So it was a pleasant surprise in my research on the guest speaker today that I discovered that the chairman of Fortune Hong Kong Seafood Restaurant is none other than our guest speaker today. Fellow Rotarians and guests, it is my great 
honor to have as our guest speaker in the our second guest speaker in the success story series a man i have not had the privilege of knowing personally but had admired from afar mr dennis anthony hoy thank you thank you uh, vice president uh, tony and uh, thank you for your uh, kind and uh, detail of introduction uh, let me uh, um greet the our life changing president louis aserche and life changing uh, president Amy Guerrero, army guerrero and uh, life changing president aj sembrano past president mini de la Siena, and we have director princess paul and uh, BP Tony and Director Rex Lagin and my friend uh, Dotarian I I uh, Galvez and uh, other distinguished guests. Good afternoon. First of all, happy safer Internet Day today. We join hand with stakeholder all over the world to make the Internet safer and better place for all especially for the children and young people. It is my great pleasure to join you in this meeting. I'm glad to be among friends in business community to share the journey of Converge. In the last two years, the spotlight has been on the telecommunication and the connectivity since everything worked business, entertainment, education, on depend on connectivity. We said this before, our connectivity is now Filipino lifeline. My name is Dennis Anthony Uy, CEO and co-founder of Converge. From a startup in Pampanga, Converge is now the fastest growing fiber broadband provider in the country. In Converge, our goal is to fiber power the Filipino nation. We want people to think about innovation and the latest cutting edge technology when they hear about Converge. About before I talk about Converge, the company, let me share with you a my brief personal history. This is my long lifelong journey with the technology. I migrated to Philippines when I was 11 years old. It's 1978. And I faced many barriers. I did not even know how to speak and write in English or native uh, language. I worked in my uncle's supermarket. I remember I sleeping on top of the supermarket uh, chest freezer counter or this uh, payment counter at the the night time. I was the, the uh, guard or janitor taking off uh, my uncle's uh, shops. Then I learned about technology and business. This continued to all the way my high school days when I was enrolled in vocational course in computer, the technology, electronics, then with uh, air conditioning and refrigeration services. At the same time, I was selling Betamax video when every Filip population with Filipino then. I also sold computer during my uh, during that days in my hometown. I think that's the uh, early 80s during the Apple days. You can notice in Green Hills area, this computer green amber monitors with this Apple IIe and Commodore. That's early in Atari games, no, that's early days. No? When, I, uh, when, uh, when I see that uh, cable is arriving in 1990s, early 90s, I was, I knew already Betamax was 
era was coming to end, no? And I sold all my Betamax tapes and I reaching more than 500 duplicated machines and more than, I think, 60,000 titles during, this is before American base still there in the Clark, no? I, uh, I uh, rented all this tape. And finally, I set it out to upper north provinces like Isabela and Baguio, no? So then I'm switching to cable that time, no? After Pinatubo erupted in 1991, I set up Angeles City Cable Television Network. People thought I was crazy because that time the city and near Clark Air Base were blanketed of thing of us for. Major breaches were destroyed and the economics collapsed and the American departed. But I saw business opportunity at the same time. I felt the need to, to provide Filipino and provide people with news and entertainment to live their lives and spirits. But as you know, technology moved forward quickly. Soon, the internet came to Pampanga. I got into prepaid dial-up. And I set up the whole uh, dial-up uh, prepaid with the uh, partnership with PLDT and Nationwide linking the whole single pilot number. And we still remember at uh, 100 pesos for hours when I started. And the, then we have the cable television network set up and I, the infrastructure is there and in place, I offer cable internet access using cable technology. That's only the service area of Pampanga, no? surrounded uh, mostly Central Luzon. At, that, at this point, I make the decision to stick. One type of technology, I knew the fiber would be the best choice. That's at least 96, yeah, that's early I started. I still remember that fiber has cost me $9 a meter. And uh, now it's ten cents per a meter, no? So that's disparity of the cost when you have entered the new uh, technology. Fiber is not a passing trend. Technology even back 90s. I knew the fiber is the future. In 2016, we launched cable ICT solution. You have time, please look the video in your YouTube entitled of Converge ICT Media Nouns in 2016. Whatever I said that happened, the reality now is true. Everything, kung ano lahat na sinabi ko that during that time, naging, katoto, naging totoo lahat nangyari as of today. In 2019, we partner with Warber Pingus and for the $250 million investment, we have a beauty contest, several investors before we choosing them. No? And we are looking for someone who believe our vision and would able to bring the expertise in growing the company. In 2020, October 2020, we listed the Philippine uh, Stock Exchange with the biggest IPO offer in the Philippines since 2016 at that time. The fund generated in that IPO was used for nationwide expansion, we took on capital intensive fiber, roll out nationwide because we want to provide more Filipino with access to fast and reliable internet connection. But now that we are published this tech company, we need to transform that organization as we assemble a world-class team to bring converts to the next level. We now have a responsibility to our investor. So we have to run the company with the best interest in mind. In 2020, the pandemic hit us. Everything shipped online, business, work, entertainment, education, social interaction, even medical care. Everything was done digitally. We saw Filipino appetite 
for strong and stable internet connection. And we answered the needs of the fiber technology. The pandem pandemic show us have no internet connection is like no oxygen. Connectivity is a life of source of many Filipino and businesses and many P people and businesses. Having internet access should not just be a privilege of few, but should be a right of a, every Filipino regardless of economic standing. What interesting to note in that our data shows that 94% of our new subscriber in Converge are the first time fixed broadband users. The demand is really there. And this is, I call, huge and blue ocean opportunity for the broadband operator in the Philippines. So how did we meet this demand? We accelerate our go deep and go national strategy to ensure that we are able to connect as many people as faster possible time. So now we are happy to report that our digital highway completed. In 2021, we invested even 25 billion in CapEx for our backbone, including our 6 billion for the domestic subsea cable. Now we have over 1,800 kilometers of subsea cable and 90,000 terrestrial fiber backbone. This is undergrounds. Fiber backbone supported by 20 landing stations throughout the Philippines, connected besides Mindanao and Luzon. The completion of our cable project its connection to our domestic fiber backbone means two things. One, our network is stronger and more resilient since we completed the redundancy loop. Two, our network is able to serve more unserved and underserved area because we made sure the pass through the major island of the Philippines. We have aggressively expand our network in the cities and municipalities throughout the country. As of Q3, 2021, total port alone throughout the Philippines, we have 5.2 million ports already. And Q3 alone of 2021, we built 650,000 ports. And total household penetration, entire country, we reached 9.6 million homes, uh, home pass network nationwide. This is translate to 38% of native nationwide coverage. We are not done yet. We are continuously expand to reaching more citizens in the next few months. Our goal is to reach our customer in our area no matter how small the town or porok, kahit nasa bundok and tabilagat, we will reach them. We are also made sure that our network offer is the latest, the best technology. Our network is the first in the country run to 400 gig technology and upgraded to the industrial leading standard of 800 gig per lambda, which is make the only ISP or make the only telco in the country using this technology today. The capacity make possible with high speed data transfer are needed for streaming, remote storage, and the next generation of technology. Recently, we also power our 10G phone in the next evolution of fiber broadband, providing 10 times more bandwidth than the current mainstream of G-Pon variant. 
this technology allowed Filipino to have a better equip for the future such the upcoming metaverse or the virtual no? virtualization and the video uh, demand in the in terms of the bandwidth uh, and the future technology you can see all these things is they start remotely and the cloud all this technology they need especially they need more pipes no? on the international international side our network we are in currently on this service provider using all the submarine cable station in the Philippines. And all subsea cable in the Philippines ensure high ability. So no single subsea cable cut could impair in the experience of our customer. Recently, we entered to RU agreement with Tesla. And recently we just acquired two landing station from one in Diet, Cavite, and one in Nasubo, Batangas. This is previous owned by DCI and this cable called EAC and C2C. We are on 60% of ownership now as of today. And recently we uh, signed agreement with uh, Keppel, Singapore, to the build the first cable from Singapore all the way to US. This is called Bifrost cable. And we have uh, split it in uh, Dabao landing. This is we available on 2024. So at this early stage, we have our own cable to anticipate of the future demand of the capacity. And we have built more cable to come. And we are so lucky our country is the middle of Southeast Asia going to US. And what happened today is the trade war between US and China Philippines should be become a digital hub of Asia. And this is our positioning right now. We have three more cables coming from the tip of the zone to able to bring our Southeast Asia countries to direct path to US. And this is co-partnership with the OTT operators. Let me talk about something is close to my heart. No? What does the future look of for Converge? I'm planning to put a biggest tech city in the country. This is in Pampanga, because that's where I grew up in, and that's my hometown. In US, in Silicon Valley, there's a, our innovation lab and cultivate the ideas of young entrepreneur and the student. I want to do some same, build an ecosystem with innovation and technology. And I want to be produce technology-minded students, our business people that will know direction of the technology and create solution for the future. In Silicon Valley, I just visited them last May and I visited so because I've been in this industry so more than 20 or 30 years. Uh, I Cisco, this uh, app security, Palo Alto, Fortinet, all this high tech IT, mostly the technology people there, mostly I think five up to 10, I have 50% of this high technology level are Filipinos. So I said, it's about time. We need, uh, we are talented people, but we need to build and create an ecosystem that we harness all of this. Talent in the concentrate solution, it's about time to start the ecosystem to help young graduates and entrepreneurs. In closing, this long life affair with technology and what did me innovate and bring fiber technology in the public and lead me to this point. But at this, but at the heart of everything we do is our passion of people. We disrupted the norm and challenges in the gi giants because we have a purpose. We believe the Filipino need another choice for their services provider. 
that has no put up with expensive and slow broadband internet for many, many years. And this is a known fact. Today, goal remain at the same to connect the unserved and underserved area in the Philippines. We will continue to innovate to disrupt the challenges with existing construct in order to uplift the lives of our kababayans through connectivity. Sabi ng mga iba, what is my business advice for the year of Tiger? Sabi ko, dapat palaki kang matapang. Alam, as long as alam mo ang tama ka and nasa lugar ka, paninigam mo and wag kang matras. Thank you and good afternoon to all. Thank you very much uh, to our guest speaker, Mr. Dennis Anthony Oy. And now it's time to answer our questions. First off, we have a question, two questions actually from our VP, Tony Lopez, uh, for our guest. First off, how big is the data center being constructed in Pampanga in terms of uh, power requirements? What is a hyperscaler? What it is for? And also he asks, what is Converge doing to protect children from child abusers on the internet? Uh, Chief, you are- Today, in... yeah, today we are together with other provider with the uh, United Nations uh, UNDP. And uh, we, I think the, we, we member of one of the international uh, NGO to uh, protect this child pornography. And uh, in fact, we block more than 18 to 20,000 sites already in our network. No? So we invest the uh, spatial uh, tools, deeper packet and uh, penetration. We can block all this, uh, this uh, suspect uh, in terms of the porn site or this uh, attracting a uh, young generation to, to have uh, child trafficking. No? So we, 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 we actively uh, cooperate and um, join this uh, NGO to prevent our young people to be masisira uh, buhay in the in the future. No? So that's one. And uh, we invest a lot of the tools and technology to to identify and primarily, and we have, uh, they will totally uh, block this to the network. No? In terms of the uh, hyperscale, uh, there's a lot of things we need to do. No, uh, We are, the one thing good in the Philippines, we're in the middle of the Asia. No? And uh, we need to do a lot of things to be able to compete with uh, other regions. Number one, doing business is number one. It's very important. Uh, investor confidence, that's another, another one. No? Uh, the tax incentive for the, uh, this high skill, uh, high uh, tech industry, we don't have because we just have a new create law. No? So another one is the power cost. Data center is a 24 by 7 power cost. Today I'm in uh, I, I'm I'm right now in Singapore. I, that's why I'm 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 ask my apology. I'm going to attending the uh, meeting with uh, uh, this um, EDB Economic Development uh, Board in Singapore to looking this some uh, better uh, opportunity investment for the Asia Pacific. We put more because in this Southeast Asia you can see Indonesia, uh, Malaysia. Singapore, uh, this Myanmar, Cambodia, in this area. When the uh, traffic going to US, usually they pass uh, uh, Pacific uh, water. No? And this is the very near with the Dabao because all this uh, subsea cable pass to this area. So that's why when you have put them together in uh, capacity, put a, a, a hyperscale in Philippines, we need to put a digital hub in Philippines to able bring this Asian nation to host our traffic stop over in Philippines before the transit to US. No, and this happening now. No, that's why I mentioned a while ago the Bifrost cable was invested uh, Kepel, and uh, we are the part of uh, one senatory, and we are the part of the investor there. And this the three or four cable is stranded by political geopolitical issue. 
and uh, we are taking off them and we will I will put them in Philippines soon to upper north and uh, some in Subic so I have already built the whole digital highway throughout the Philippines and this can be become a transshipment point of the uh, data that's one basic requirement for the digital highway to have a track hyperscaler because you have a digital highway to bring this data in the country second we need to have a green power and lower cost power. Third, we need to build an economic zone to able to host them. Hyperscaler, my plan is a 20,000 square meters, two hectare data center, in which is going to build in Pampanga, Mexico. And uh, this is coming soon. And, uh, and the property we bought already, I think we got 100 plus hectares. And this is in the middle of processing to economic zone status with this property. And this is we bring uh, not just only for data center. I will put also a satellite digital hub for the Asia the content. So this is satellite operator. We will host them in uh, in that area too, because we have digital highway, we have earth station, we have satellite, and the future. I will put innovation center and training center, and this Filipino very deep developing about animation all this software development, we need to put them together and give them a training and ecosystem to able to deliver and then more achieve for our talented people. Thank you. I guess we have one last question due to the time limit. This one coming from President Luis Aceweche and more about the question on how a billionaire's mind think when, when, when a lot of money is at stake. The question is, you were initially reported to have expressed interest in being the third telco provider after Smart and Globe, but later on backed out and Dito Telco, you know, everybody knows, won the uh, bidding. What made you decide to drop out from the race? And uh, to add to that, during the Typhoon Odette, all internet and communication lines were down, which rendered relief efforts very difficult because uh, affected areas were not identified. What is your average turnaround time to, to reconnect uh, facilities in cases of disasters like that? Yeah, okay, For this is for, your, for the uh, public information. Before Dito came to China Telco Partnership, China Telco Telecom worked with me for more than a year. No? So before they came out with the bidding. So because I'm from this industry, I, China Telecom is my client more than 12 years. No? So when we noticed this, uh, I'm personally decided with, uh, this is a Korean Telecom, it's not SK. No? So I've, I talked to the chairman of Korea with the ambassador of Korea. The last minute we pulled out because the reason is uh, too apolitical. No? So we decided not in, not join. No? But uh, in terms of technology, in terms of uh, capability, I think I'm deeper with the uh, experience and track record. So we decided not to push through and I'm focusing, make the uh, digital highway to able to deliver fixed broadband to individual. And I think this is the future. And that's why we focused the past number of years and we make happen. Hopefully by 2023, I can reach in almost 60% of households in the Philippines. And uh, I mentioned a while ago, the internet is not just only for uh, ABC class. We should thinking of the d and &E. And this is a rights of the individual Filipino to have access. So we look in that segment and uh, we make sure it's each individual Filipino, wherever you are, you in the mountain with a small um, population area, we should provide them, not uh, no discrimination. No? So those in the mountainous area, we can provide them by satellite. So, and we can doing, because some is not viable to spend the fiber to bring the small community because economic, uh, 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 you cannot make the return of investment, but if you're using satellite and then you can wire them a small community, you still can serve them. In fact, this audit happened in uh, Strike Us. We are the first company in, in we uh, provide the satellite uh, in Shergao, no? So in uh, we provide all some some satellite phone also, and because I built several satellite earth station already in the country, that's part of uh, starting we uh, testing, and that's why we immediately made uh, deliver already. And by two months from now, I make sure we can deliver more than uh, 
4,000 or 2,000 schools nationwide, those who are not reachable by any provider. So we are hoping by the public education, we will uh, partner with the department education to able to deliver this in two to three months from now. So this is the satellite we are setting up. In fact, we set up already in Angeles. So next about uh, mention about the how the disruptive of this typhoon Philippines is very disastrous this country, no? So you, you, you can see our typhoon every year. We have from A to C in the name of the typhoon all gone, no? So that's why we decided our infrastructure 100% backbone is underground. That's why what happened to Cebu in besides we have rollout is not affecting in our this, this, uh, this uh, typhoon except this distribution from pole to, to home. So that is the biggest hit we have. No? So we are recovering fast. In fact, we provide a lot of, uh, uh, we have more than 200 crews right now. I think we, we almost finished in Cebu. No? The, the rest, we don't have any uh, suffer in this, uh, this uh, typhoon last uh, or that, yeah. Thank you very much again. I think we only have one last question. And uh, we have George Barcelona, our esteemed colleague at the line. And also, your, I know he's a good friend of yours. Since you mentioned satellites, I think he's going to be asking about Starlink, which is also the question of Ed Rojas. Okay. Please go ahead, George. Hi. Hi, Dennis. Yeah. Uh, hi, Drex. George. Yeah. Hi, Drex. Is right. my, my mind about, uh, about uh, I remember our discussion one time, and you mentioned that uh, you have already touched base with the Starlink low orbit internet. <laughs> Uh, and uh, that is going to be uh, a jump off point for you to cover the whole of uh, the Philippines in uh, satellite broadband. Maybe you can elaborate uh, uh, this uh, for the for, for for our Rotarian members. Thank you. Yeah, with with Starling or without Starling is uh, we are there. No, in fact, one web is uh, the regional office here in Singapore. I, I talking to them tomorrow. No. The Starlink, we have signed agreement with some uh, acquisition of the fiber from us, and uh, we list our infrastructure to them, no? and uh, some earth station. It's starting already. In fact, in one of the Clark uh, uh, backbone and capacity, we are the one to provide, and they have more than, I think, 10 sites. No? But I think it's not that easy. No? Starting to take a while. No? It's not immediately. Because even you, uh, the, what this, um, the service uh, app, uh, open to foreign, 100% uh, foreign ownership. They still need to comply with our regulations. No? They need to get NTC permit, type approve the machine, uh, type approve the equipment. Text, and, uh, text, text them a while. No? So I, I think the direction is they want to do their own. No? They don't want to have partner with the local. What is they happen to India? No? I think what happened to India, they didn't get through because they don't have partner. No? And now uh, myself, I cannot wait because that's why I built my own earth station already in Pampanga to support uh, our public school this year. No? And uh, not only that, to the uh, marina, no? so to the mining companies. This is niche market. And uh, to the Rotalians here today, the satellite not necessarily can compete with fiber. Fiber is still best technology. And I don't think you, you're going to use this satellite just for the city use. No? anywhere you can get fiber. Satellite is used for the remote, not reachable by the infrastructure. Satellites used for resort, mining, and mobility. So going around with uh, like uh, uh, airplanes or the boats or tracking, that's, that's purpose. They say needs of, needs of requirement. But bringing the satellite to using the consumer with the fiber connection, forget it. Because now it's the 2000 dollars of this installation to charge to customer before it's I think how much? One hundred five hundred dollars. But now because of the uh, technology adjustment in the news they come out with a two thousand one time installation and it's hundred dollars a month. No? So fiber you can get thirty dollars one five. So I don't think this is for the consumer segment. No? So this is for the those who needs market uh, to able to complement those who cannot reach by the infrastructure of the fiber. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, we have to cut off right now the question and answer period, but I volunteer Ms. Karen Carvajal of Converge to, uh, <laughs> to help us answer her questions later because there's a ton of them. 
especially <laughs> business related ones. And I'm not going to let you go off that easy, Miss Karen. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much. And now it's time for the response from our president, starting with President Louis and President uh, LCP Armin Guerrero from RCM Maguilas. Go ahead, please. Uh, good afternoon. In behalf of the Rotary Club of Makati Magilas, expresses our thanks to our mother club, the Rotary Club of Makati, under the leadership of my hardworking classmate, LCP Louis Ahioche, and the Club of Makati, led by LCP AJ Sembrano, for this wonderful and meaningful joint meeting. I would like to congratulate our guest speaker for today, Mr. Dennis Oyser, thank you for this informative and inspiring message. We all know that information and communication technology is very useful in this time of pandemic. Through this, we see each other via Zoom application platform. We can do business and we do meeting just we doing right now. Lastly, I would like to thank the PNP who are joining us in this meeting. Thank you and stay safe. Thank you very much. Now our response from LCP AJ Sembrano from RAC Makati. All right. Thank you, Director Drex. I, I'm AJ Sembrano, the live season president of the Rotary Club of Makati. And um, we are grateful to the Rotary Club of Makati, our sponsor Rotary Club, sponsoring Rotary Club for this joint meeting. And also thank you, Sir Dennis. Anthony Uy for gracing our joint meeting this afternoon. And um, just would like to share a few message that there is no doubt that the internet has opened up a whole new world of content connections and networking possibilities today. And um, the explosion of digital and social media has fundamentally changed the way we function, communicate, and do business both on and offline. And as a Converge user myself, which began when I started working from home in 2020 when the pandemic started, I firmly believe that in today's, in today's time, internet is not just a need or luxury. It has become a household necessity because it connects us with our friends and our families. And um, just would like to share because of the advancement of technology and of, because of the internet, it became easier for us, the Rotary Club of Makati, to, to expand our network in our reach. In fact, we were able to conduct various online seminars that benefit Rotary Actors from across the country. We were able to voice one of our biggest causes this Rotary year, which is our Better Voter campaign, which was done mostly online through various social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. And we have signed Friendship and Twin Club Agreement in 35 Rotary Clubs in and outside the country, and 22 of that number was held virtually. We were also able to raise funds for our end polio campaign and send help to typhoon victims in Bohol and Cebu during Typhoon Odette. And I believe these are just a few of the perks of, of the expansion and the advancement of technology, technology with the help of the internet. And in closing, I just would like to reiterate what Mr. Uy mentioned earlier, that digital access is no longer a privilege of a few but a right of every Filipino regardless of economic standing. I really like what when, when he said that and the, the, the goal of Converge, which is to reach and connect the undeserved and unserved areas in the country. I believe if we help or work together, we can do that. And again, thank you so much, Mr. Densley, for that inspiring talk. That's all, thank Director Jax. Thank you. And uh, just before we go to the next uh, response, the big, the big response, I, I noticed that uh, that the uh, the question from VP Tony Lopez regarding child abuse protection from the internet is very, very uh, hot topic because uh, LCP Armin Guerrero is from the Philippine National Police, and it's they, they have that mandate to do so. And we, I noticed that we also have CIC Director Mary Lou Magsaysay who just came from a meeting earlier this morning talking yeah. about that same topic. And then, and then uh, we also have um, former com Privacy Commissioner Raymond Liboro on the line listening on to, to, to Dennis right now. So anyway, without much further ado, here's the response from our President, Attorney Louis Asoweche.
You're on mute, Mr. President, I think. Me? Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Drex. Uh, as I said earlier, you seem to still be having difficulties pronouncing my surname right. Thank you, LCP uh, Police Colonel Armin Guerrero of RC Makati Magilas and LCP AJ Sembrano of the Rotary Rotaract Club of Makati for agreeing to co-host this meeting with me. Please stay on as we will still be doing our respective president's times and announcements. We will not yet be adjourning. Okay, so hunger and passion are the two potent ingredients of success. In Dennis Uy's case, these two factors played key roles in catapulting his IT solutions company, which is Converge, to the top of the highly competitive business of network and internet connectivity. Dennis fed on the hunger of Filipino consumers for fast, reliable, stable, and affordable internet connection with a blazing passion of liberating Filipinos from poor and expensive internet connection. Born during the Cultural Revolution in China, Dennis, who migrated to the Philippines and settled at Angeles City in Pampanga, launched his own revolution by redefining the standards for connectivity in the Philippines based on an end-to-end -end fiber optic technology and putting in place an ambitious and industry-leading domestic fiber backbone that interconnected the Philippine islands. This enabled Converge to reach the unserved and the underserved areas. I personally shifted to Converge after getting exasperated over the poor but awfully expensive internet connection services by another provider. And it was a shift that I continue to enjoy till this very day as Converge continues to blaze the trail by offering free permanent speed upgrades. Imagine that to all its subscribers. I thought at first that this was just the usual run of the mill marketing pitches until I myself availed of the upgrade and then conducted a speed test only to find out that the upgrade is really for real. And that is how Converge and Dennis will reward their customers for their loyalty. Congratulations. Thank Last you. year, we had a run of speakers who disrupted, quote unquote, disrupted prevailing business models, and in doing so, achieved success in their respective fields. Dennis, his wife, and Converge ICT solutions are right smack into the evolution of technology. He was right there at the onset of digital, evaluate, digital evolution in entertainment and in communication from TV, Betamax, VHS, DVD, cable TV, flash drives, dial-ups, DSL, mobile, fiber, and now contact and connectivity converging, streaming via the cloud. Advancement in technology so fast that you end up getting irrelevant if you do not keep at pace with the cutting edge approaches to the digital world. And what is remarkable about Dennis, our second success story this year is that he considers it the right of every Filipino, regardless of his or her economic status, to have affordable and dependable internet access. And that is a right that is fast becoming a basic need in this modern age. On behalf of the Rotary Club of Makati, our aunts, our district governor, Georgie Tan, my co-host clubs today led by LCP Armin, of our daughter club, R.C. Makati Magilas, and LCP A.J. Sembrano of the Rotaract Club of Makati. The other Rotarians, my classmates from the different Rotary Clubs in our district, all our guests in attendance, please accept, Dennis, our heartfelt gratitude for giving us your time. Dennis, please accept our tokens of appreciation. We'll, we'll be sending these to you. First- Thank you, you thank you. This 55th coffee table book recently published and featuring the milestones of the Rot Rotary Club of Makati for the last 55 years. And you can enjoy reading our coffee table book with this bottle of wine. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We are giving you this plaque of appreciation, which has an embossed replica of the steel plate on the reef bud that we will be planting in the seabed of Narvacan in Ilocos Sur as part of our Save Our Reefs project. This is a major environmental initiative of our club, the Rotary Club of Makati, in line with Rotary's seventh area of focus, which is saving the environment. Hopefully, Dennis, our reef buds will not get in the way of your submarine cables. Now, 
We are not yet adjourning, but we, I ask everyone to activate their videos now for our customary photo shoot with our guest speaker before he leaves. Everyone, please say, converge. 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 Thank you, thank you. Slide one. Thank you very much. And slide two, slide after two. this, slide two. after this, now we are going to proceed to other club matters. Thank you very much, Dennis, for your time. And Thank to you. Karen. And uh, have a good day. Thank you. 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 Thank it's time to wish our birthday greetings and wedding anniversary celebrators for the Rotarians. We wish to, uh, to greet happy birthday to Andre De Jesus on February 9, Brian Liu on February 10, PP René Limhoko on the 11th. And then of course we have Cesar Campos Jr. on the 12th and then Mr. Rick Gindap on February 13. For our loveliest Rotary aunts, we Wish them happy birthday on February 10th to Grisel Medalla, then Marilu Alejandro. On the 11th of February, we have also uh, Miss Melanie Lopez on February 12th, Catrofino on 13th, and then of course the wedding anniversary, Jojo and Joy Concepcion on February 11th, and of course Treasurer Bom and Ami Villatuya on February 11th. I read the name Melanie because I thought <laughs> but anyway, the acknowledgement of guests and visiting Rotarians. Um, we wish to greet, the, of course, our PDG Tony Kila, PDG, PDG Sid Garcia, and our PDG Peps Benzon. I see you all here, and, and I'm glad to see you guys. And of course, our Rotary aunts, Rose Galvez, Yvonne Kwan, Lou Limhoko, and Menchu Pascual. So great to see lovely ladies on this channel today. And of course, we would also like to greet our life-changing president, Isa Espina from RC Makati, San Antonio. And then we have Rina Lopez from RC Makati, Premier District. Premier na. And then of course, we have the guests of LCP, uh, Colonel Armin Guerrero, who is a private master sergeant, Kakayan, MA Junior, P.A.T. Bautista, uh, Christian Canoningo, Sir Magal Romel Magallanes, Sir R.J. Penetrante, Sir Ramos, Sir uh, Regine Acau, and Sir Mickey Royce C. And of course, Richard Trinidad. And we also have his guest, Ronald Olivier, o Oliver. <laughs> Thinking French, big lap. Then of course, we have guests from um, other Rotary clubs. I actually have a guest. He... See uh, Carlo Cachola and uh, Kirk John Koo, and of course, former Privacy Commissioner Raymond Liboro. And our guests from other Rotary Clubs we have the Rotary Club of Asia Pacific College, Rotary Club of Carmona, Rotary Club of De La Salle University, the Rotary Club of Makati Legaspi, the Rotary Club of Makati Nielsen, Rotary Club of Makati Pio del Pilar, Rotary Club of Makati Supreme 198. Rotary Club of Metro Bacolod, Rotary Club of Metro Lucena, Rotary Club of STI Laguna, Rotary Club of Tagbilaran, HNU Chapter, and the Rotary Club of University of the East, College of Dentistry. And then, of course, who are we to forget? Other guests, PP Meg Sloon from RC Metro Calibo, Cruhai. PP Rosie Reyes from RC Metro Calibo, Cruhai. And ALS Interact Club of Metro Calibo, Miel Flores. Kruhai. Magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. Kruhai, Drix. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, I think it's time to for the classification talk from Reggie Ponferrada. Yes. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Reggie Ponferrada. I'm a new Rotarian. My sponsor is uh, P.P. Reginolido, who is also my Ninong. 
I'm a founding partner of Panterada Tito Offices, a boutique law firm comprised of eight lawyers. We are on our 11th year now, having been established in 2011. As a named partner of Panferada Tito Offices, we, I act as director and, and corporate secretary for our various corporate clients. We also provide legal representation in various uh, fora, such as trial courts and government agencies involving disputes of, of varying scope and, and complexity. One of the high profile cases that we have handled is the successful defense of Mr. Nico Falsis against the various criminal cases filed against him by Ms. Chris Aquino in 2019. Recently, we also handled the successful collection of 25 million pesos for a mezzanine fund against one of its debtors, which operate a chain of, of dialysis centers. Prior to the founding of Ponferratino offices, uh, I had the privilege of working in SA Philippines Incorporated, the Sandigan Bayan, and in Villarasa Cruz Marcelo ng Angko, where I had the privilege of being mentored by the former Ombudsman and Solicitor General Simeon V. Marcelo, among other partners of the firm. I obtained my, my, my law degree from UPD Diman. Prior to pursuing a, my legal studies, I had a technical background like our previous speaker. I, I have a degree in engineering from, from the same university at UP. My aunt, uh, say Juan Ferrada, is a creative director at UB Burnett Manila. She is also uh, uh, an award-winning children's book author. We are blessed with a one son, uh, Ray Ray Juan Ferrada, who is a DOST Youth uh, Science Awardee for his various wins in international math competitions in 2021. He is also a yellow belter in Taekwondo and he dreams of being a Taekwondo black belter someday. Uh, I, I read in an article uh, very recently that to be successful in life, you must have at least three hobbies, one hobby to keep you in shape, another hobby to keep you creative, and, and another hobby to, to earn your money. So, so I play basketball to keep me in shape, but because of the pandemic, I have shifted to, to sports which are more uh, individual in nature, no? such as running. No? So, so in, in 2020, I, I ran a lot. My, my longest was 21 kilometers, and then my knee started to hurt. So I'm now into cycling and, and swimming. Hopefully, I, I can do this for, for a very long time. To keep me creative, I, I play various musical instruments. Uh, last year, I discovered the melodica, which is a hybrid of harmonica and keyboard. I usually jam with my, with my son, who plays the ukulele, and, and my wife, who plays the guitar. So we, we usually we, we follow the, 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 the stay-at-home health protocol very strictly. So we spend most of our, our times together. I'm still working on the third hobby, the, the, the hobby to, 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 to help you earn uh, money. But I used to teach as a hobby in UP until I realized that I did not like checking papers. So, so I'm still working on the third hobby. So, so that's all. Thank you for listening. Uh, have a great day. Thank you very much, Attorney Reggie. Maybe uh, somebody here from uh, the, the RCMAC can introduce you to another hobby, but I digress. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, before, before that, uh, very nice hobby and uh, very... Anyway, it's the president's time. Um, first off, we have President Louis Asueche. Take it away, Louis. And thank you also to my, is my audio okay? Thank you also to my compañero Reggie for your classification talk. Why don't you join our one of these team and you play the melodica? We have this band, the one of these, which we will be reviving this year and probably next year. Again, welcome to my co-host this afternoon, LCP Police Colonel Sir Armin Guerrero and LCP AJ Sembrano of the Rotaract Club of Makati. I am happy to inform you that our club has just launched the Hack for Food, 
This is the week-long hackathon event that we launched on January 25. Just to uh, refresh your memory, the Hack for Food Challenge is a search for the best value chain system designs and forecasting models that our local farmers and fishermen can use in order to upgrade their operations, increase their income, and improve their economic stations in life. This contest is open to young IT professionals in the country, and participants have until midnight of February 26 to submit their entries. My special thanks to my treasurer, our treasurer, Bong Villatuya, for conceptualizing and spearheading this project. And of course, to Mr. Moderator Drex Lagi, who is the director in charge of this project for his help in planning for this project as well. And our project partners, the Analytics Association of the Philippines, RCBAE, and again, the Rotaract Club of Makati. And then nothing gives the heart a happier, lighter, lighter lilt than helping people limping from misfortune get back on their feet. That is why last January 25, 20 fishermen from five barangays in Puerto Princesa City, Palawan, received cash donations from our club for the purchase of engines for their boats that had been damaged and rendered useless when Typhoon Odette came barreling into their island before Christmas time. The club's donation of 250,000 pesos would allow them to get new engines and each engine costs 12,700 pesos each to run again their boats, ply their trade and make a decent living once again. The donation was in response to an appeal for help from our brother club, RC Puerto Princesa, led by LCP Edgar Allan Naraga. Now here are two meetings to look forward to in the next two weeks. On February 15, we will have Bobby Lehman of Amalgamated Investments, who will give us a briefing on what may possibly be sound investments this year. And on February 22, which will be our first Rotary Ants Day with Dr. Mingita Padilla, letting us in on how we can heal our ailing healthcare system. For those of you who are yet unfamiliar with Ants Day, that's the time of the year, Rotary year, when our ants would take over and run the meeting, just as they normally do in our respective households. Also later at 5.30 p.m., please support our member, James Buskovich, by attending the meeting of our daughter club, the RC Makati Premier District, where James, who is the founder and CEO of, Ren of a renewable energy company, bearing his name, will be the guest speaker. So that will be all for my president's time, Rex. The other LCPs will now come in. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, Louis, Attorney Louis Oseweche, now it's time for the for LCP Armin Guerrero from RCM Magilas. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, for your... thank you Mr. Moderator, and thank you to my hardworking classmate. Mukhang nakakahiya itong mga project kung magagawa ngayon. By the way, our club is already done the Rotary Day of Service, which we are constructed one classroom in our benefited community. So right now, our club would like to inform that our club has a medical mission and bloodletting activities this coming month. So in this regard, I encourage you to join this noble project. That's for me, for the RC Makati Maginas. Thank you. Short and sweet. Napakasarap. Parang hindi sana pag-ibig. Mas long-term dapat ang pag-ibig. Pero short and sweet yung message. Excellent. Now it's time for the President's time for LCP AJ Sembrano from RAC Makati. Go ahead. Thank you, Thank you Sir Jax. Uh, Sir Ron, uh, allow me to share my screen. All right. So I'll just would like to make a few announcements for the Rotary Club of Makati for this President's time. Uh, for the accomplishments of the club in the past two weeks, we had the fifth episode of our Uber podcast, which is a leadership training in partnership with the Rotary Club of Makati. And on our fifth episode, we actually have our community service team who led the discussion and uh, with us also shared his message is president uh, or past president Bimbo Mills from Rotary Club of Makati. And I would also like to take this opportunity to thank uh, 
our previous speakers who came from the pool of past presidents of the Rotary Club of Makati, we have past district governor Peps Dingzon, life-changing president Louis Asayoche, past president Regine Olido, and immediate past president I, Peter Manzano. And uh, for the next one, we had our friendship and green club signing, which was held last January 30th. We actually had renewed and made new agreement with seven Rotary clubs in the District 330 and 10 Rotary clubs outside the district, coming from various district, districts across the Philippines. And we even have one from Nepal. So that's and next, we have, uh, I also have reported during the mid-year review the accomplishments of the, of, of the Rotary Club of Makati. And in, in the panelists, we have DRC, um, we have also past press, our immediate past District Rotary Club Representative Jerry from 3850 and um, past District Rotary Club Representative uh, Chol uh, from a, a different district as well. Now, um, for the next one, uh, we also attended the Filipinas Rotary Branding Academy, and the, the club is really uh, proud that one of the speakers came from uh, the Rotary Club of Makati, which is past president Mark Hill Cato. Next, we also attended Elevate Rotary Caravan, initiated by the Filipinas Rotary MDIO. That was just last Sunday. And we discuss what are the um, upcoming or well, what's new with Rotaract this coming uh, Rotary year 2022 to 2023, as we all know that we have already elevated our status in Rotary International. Next, for upcoming events, let me just make it uh, quick. Or the sixth episode of Uber Podcast, we have our finance team and of course, past president Junjun Dairit, who will... Uh, which will be done on February 12, 2022. That's going to be this Saturday. Next, we also have the first ever Filipino Rotaract Olympics hosted by our very own district, the Rotaract District 3830. That's going to be on February 19 to 27. We have um, badminton, bowling tournament, Mobile Legends tournament, Call of Duty tournament, and an amazing race, which will be held in Los Baños. Next. We have ProCon 2022, all the Filipinas Rotary Convention, hosted by District 3870 in Iligan City. And last, we will also be attending the 18th Asia Pacific Regional Rotary Conference, which will be held in May. That's all for me, Director Jax. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before we proceed to the responses, uh, I'd just like to remind everybody that in case you missed out on any announcements earlier today, like the one that I, I wish to see, yung Call of Duty, Chaka League of Legends, the tournaments, <laughs> and uh, and also the president, you know, the, the speech, kanina ni uh, Dennis, this, this entire video streaming session will be posted on our official YouTube page. Yes. Hindi lang tayo boomer, millennial pa. So, Later on, don't, don't be afraid that you're missing out. And now to continue with our response from LCP Armin Guerrero, RCM Magilas. Now your response, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for this uh, opportunity for having a joint meeting. We have a lot, we have a lot uh, learned from this meeting, especially to our hardworking. Ewan ko ba itong classmate ko ba, nagpapahinga na? O laging on deck? After this, he has Another meeting na naman yata. Actually, buti na huli niya ako eh. Kasi even me, I have a lot of uh, conferences to attend to. However, hindi ko mahindihan ang classmate ko. That's why I commit this uh, day to respond on this uh, calling. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you, classmate. And thank you for Rotary Club of Makati. Marami ding salamat, sir, for your service, especially. And now we are going to have a response from LCP AJ Sembrano from RAC Makati. Thank you, Sir Drex. Well, um, I've already sent my message earlier, but I just would like to take this opportunity, of course, to thank our sponsoring Rotary Club, the Rotary Club of Makati, headed by its life-changing president, Attorney Louis Asioche. And of course, I'd like to thank the Chief of Staff of RCM, headed by uh, Sir Ron, for always supporting our events, projects, and activities in the Rotary Club of Makati. Um, this is 
uh, this message is, uh, I believe I'm speaking on behalf of our club, that we are really grateful to be part of, of this family and to be your uh, your youth partner in, in the Rotary Club of Makati. And we're grateful to be invited for this joint meeting. And we have learned a lot. And uh, we'll, I'd also like to thank the Rotary Clubs who, who attended, apart from Rotary Club of Makati, and participated this afternoon for saying yes. And just a shout out, we have here, um, immediate past District Rotary Club Representative Jarek. Hello, po. good afternoon. That's all for me, Director Drex. Thank you very much. Now it's time for the biggest response from President Louis Aceyoche. I think oh, I got the name right this time. <laughs> now you got it right this time. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> oh, uh, you know, uh, well, I've said my piece earlier, but then I again would like to thank uh, my uh, co-host uh, this afternoon. I would have to share this uh, bit of a trivia with LCP Armin Guerrero. Uh, we became close at, uh, when we had this project uh, sponsored by Governor George at the Marikina Watershed Grant because, uh, uh, well, we trekked the, the, the hills of, uh, of Marikina and then this guy just, uh, you know, sidled, back to, sidled up to me and said, you want me to take a picture of you while do, you're doing those ano, mga plants, plants, ganyan. And so that's how we became close. Uh, he took my picture, I took his picture, and I didn't know that he was a policeman until, until I was invited to his induction. And uh, I had the privilege of being the only LCP that was, invite, was invited. And then was a time that I, I found out that he was a, a policeman, not just a policeman, he's a police colonel, a ranking policeman, also involved in, in forensics. So, Telegram si Armin, eh, saludo ako dyan. And uh, we had a a uh, couple of months back, we had this uh, joint project where we, we donated vaccines at the uh, BJMP head office. So uh, that was a that was a joint project between the RC Makati and the Brother Club RC Makati Manila. So uh, I look forward to uh, future collaborations with you again, my classmate, uh, Police Colonel Armin Guerrero. And now with LCP AJ Sembrano, you really are the Rotara Club of Makati, your club, because uh, when I was listening to your projects, pareho yata tayong ganun kadaming projects, no? So you, it's like uh, the foot not falling uh, far from the tree. So congratulations, LCP uh, AJ, and uh, more power to you. So now probably, Drex, we can proceed now with the adjournment uh, by the respective clubs. Let's start first with the adjournment from uh, my classmate, Police Colonel Armin Greer. I call this meeting a join. As a life-changing president of the Rotary Club of Makati, sponsored by the Rotary Club of Makati of Rotary International District 330, I hereby call this joint meeting a join. And in behalf of the Rotary Club of Makati, I am Luya Seoche. I join this meeting now. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and have a good day ahead of you.